It's time for the B A Q A A the B A Q A with Tiffany the B A Q A no mandate but the B A Q A with Lace. You know what's so crazy? <laughs> when Mandy's not in the studio, we be having people whose names rhyme either way. Okay, the B A Q A A. Welcome back and black to Brown Ambition question and answer in the stew. I have an amazing. Brown black woman named Lacey Robinson. <laughs> Lacey is the president and CEO of Unbound Ed, an education organization that offers standards aligned resources and immersive professional learning for teachers and leaders seeking, seeking equity. She has over 20 years experience in education and focuses on helping educators in school systems disrupt systemic racism and its legacy. Lacey also is the new author of the amazing book, Justice Seekers, Pursuing Woo! Equity in the Details of Teaching and Learning. Welcome to the stew. Yes. Well, back to the stew. Lacey, how are you? <laughs> I'm so good. You don't know how excited I am to hear that song. I was like, I can't wait to hear the song. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So we have Lacey in the stew. She's written this amazing book um, about justice seeking. She is a woman after my own heart because she, like me, started off in the early education classroom. And she's written this book to help. She said, it's a, what did you say, Lacey? You told me um, that kind of like offline, this is what a love letter to educators? Yes. It's my love letter to the edgy sphere. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it's, 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 it tells our triumphs, our wo woes, my hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and ultimately, it's a love letter for us from educator to educator. So, yeah, yeah. I love awesome. that. So if you're an educator, if you know an educator, because it gets, I feel like every year it gets harder and harder to do the good work. Um, I think yes. it's going to be just a perfect book to read and to connect with from a fellow educator. So, Lacey, yes. you're in the stew today for BAQA, and instead of taking questions externally, I'm going to take your questions, sis. Even though okay. Loki Hockey, Loki over here, Lacey over here slaying it. Okay, first of all, Unbounded, <laughs> where she is the president and CEO, Ms. President and CEO, it's like a $40, $40 million organization. Okay, so she went to Columbia. You said something like in the episode prior, like, I didn't go to Harvard or Yale, as if Columbia's not Ivy League. Don't do that, girl. We're not doing that. We are not downplaying black and brown excellence. Not on my watch, okay? Okay. Don't make okay. me get on my Ayana, okay. right? <laughs> and on top of that, she's written this book that Justice Seekers that that um, debuted at number one in its category, Amazon. Okay, like we're not doing that. There's just excellence, <laughs> like just flowing through her 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 brain and body. Okay, so yes. you're gonna ask me some questions. So, well, one first, is it gonna be a business question, career? Well, career, child, you good? Um, business, um, financial question. What's the first question you wanna ask? Me? Okay, so it's a financial question. So okay. I'm going to suppose, um, and I'm gonna do this on behalf of the edge sphere. Okay, okay, good, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am. Um, I'm about to graduate. Um, okay. My under. I'm in undergrad. Um, I'm. I'm going to receive my degree in elementary education. Okay. Every time I tell someone that I'm going to become a teacher, I get that conservative look like, oh, girl, you just going to be broke for the rest of your life. Okay. Like what? A teacher? You could, you know, go work for Google or whatever. What advice would you give a soon to be graduate okay. teacher around how to start off in this career? Mm -hmm. Um and not play into that role of the broke, busted, broke down, educated, that ain't never going to make enough money. What's your advice you would give? Well, first I would say, one, um, there are sites like, um, I think, I wonder if the site is still up, like Smarty Pig, I believe, where you can see, well, one, you should get clear on what you're going to make. Because like literally before you get your first paycheck, you know, you should you should know what you're going to make. And then you're going to plug that into like a website, I believe it's called Smarty Pig, or there's other ones where you can calculate based upon your state what your take home will actually be. Okay. Because, you know, let's just say you're making 40000 Now, you know it's not 40000 divided by 12, child. Because, you know, FICA right. and LICA and everybody got to get their touch. Everybody got to get a little touch. They got to get a little taste in. <laughs> right? So you want to know exactly what you're going to make. And this goes for anybody, no matter what your job is, your first job, what you're going to make um, so you can get clear and start to create a budget before you even start working. So okay. let's just say you find out 
I don't know, like every two weeks, you're going to be making $1,500. Then you can start asking yourself, I would like, I would want you to start to budget in what are the more expensive. This is what I did. This is literally me. I was graduating. I decided I wanted to be a teacher, early childhood education. My parents basically acted like I said, I wanted to be a drug dealer. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And so I remember I was like, okay, I knew I was graduating. I had got, I had a job lined up. I was making 39,000. That's what they offered. And my sister at the time told me, go on this site so you can see what you're going to make. I had never heard of that. I was like, okay. And then when I saw, I was maybe like, I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe in that 1200 every two weeks range, vaguely, I vaguely remember something in that range. And then I had to look at, I asked myself, like, the most expensive thing that I have to pay for is likely going to be housing. And if I'm being honest, I know everyone does not have this capability, but I stayed home for one year after graduating to get myself together. So if you have the opportunity, because I know it's not available to everyone, if you have the opportunity to, you know, stay um, um, home or at a place that's low cost right after graduating for a little while, six months to a year to get yourself together, take that opportunity. That's one. If you don't have that opportunity, that's okay. Because the second thing I did was I moved in with my sister and I decided let's put our money together. Yes. And so I found me a, um, a, a roommate. It doesn't have to be your sister. It could be your cousin. It could be your friend, whoever. Mm-hmm. But a roommate that you think is reasonably responsible. And we started to ha- like apartment look like collectively. And we found a place at the time. It was $1,100, which, you know, this that was many moons ago. Child, cause it oh, yes. Right. <laughs> um, but the, the, here's the thing. Even then, 1100 was low. But I we were able to get it because we thought outside the box. I didn't just look at regular apartments. This was a house being rented out by a woman who actually mm-hmm. had a daycare center next door. So she was more concerned with with who's living all here than making a ton of money. So I yeah. remember like her wanting to meet me and my sister. She was like, okay, I'll keep it at 1100 because you guys seem like good girls who are going to live here and not be tearing up and drinking and partying because that was important for her business. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you wanted to look outside. I was looking outside the box for, for, um, so look outside the box for housing and that it doesn't always okay. have to be this traditional in a house or what, you know, um, in an apartment. If you can get yourself a roommate, two or three, it's not forever. Okay. So that way you could keep your costs low. And one of the things I did while I was able to move home is I saved and bought my first car used. Girl, I have not had a new car. Like when I was in college, my father, because I have four sisters, for three of us, he he leased a car for us that we all Mm -hmm. had to share. So that just meant like I was a... Like, you know, like on on Saturday morning where the moms be taking all the kids everywhere, (laughs) that was me. He was like, you want to use that car? Then you better take this one for her hair appointment, this one to soccer practice. This one. I said, child, I'm a soccer mom. I ain't got no kids. <laughs> but I wanted that car though. <laughs> right? But and since it was a lease, it was a it was like the year like model. So that was the first and last time I ever had a new car. I have, I have I'm 43 years old and I have yet to see the inside of a brand new car. Okay. My first car I saved up, I think it was like twenty five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars, and I purchased it, you know, like from the auction myself, you know, got it. Yep. Like I, I had a, a good mechanic in my in my um, neighborhood who, you know, like helped me to figure out what car was not going to be like, you know, all busted. I kept that car. It was a 99 um, uh, Nissan Altima. And I kept that car until it was 216,000 miles. Wow. Wow. So I'm just saying, you don't have to do all that, but it was very helpful to not have a car note, you know, and it kept my insurance low. So uh, the key is right after when you, especially when you're starting off in this life professionally is to keep your monthly expenses low. How can I keep my housing expenses low? Can I stay home? Can I get a roommate? How can I keep my car or travel and traveling expenses low? Can I, you know, can I save up? I would not be getting anybody's new car. Even my car now, it, when I purchased yeah. it, it was two years old because cars yeah. depreciate, meaning they lose their value right after, you know, yeah. like, um, um, so in every aspect of my life, I was like, do we really need, um, at the time cable was like big, you know, do we really need cable or just internet? So we just had internet. You know, yeah. I made sure like when we purchased furniture, other than, although I don't buy, like I call it um, soft furniture, meaning like, um, cause people be having bed bugs, child, we're not doing all that. But you know, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about like wood furniture, you can wipe down. I would go to rich neighborhoods with, cause um, typically once, like once every few months or so neighborhoods have typically like a bulk trash day. Right. Yeah. And so what I found out is the week before bulk trash day, oftentimes people have garage sales. Yeah, because they much rather, you know, like get rid of stuff. So I would go to the wealthiest neighborhood I could find in my area and go to their little garage sales girl and get me some good furniture for, you okay. know, a hundred dollars, 200, you know, like, and so that's the thing is that 
I mean, it might feel like when that sounds like broke living, it wasn't because I was able Mm -hmm. to keep my living expenses far below what I made. And it allowed me to not have to work in the summer because, you know, like as as a teacher, so I didn't have to work in the summer to enjoy my summer. And then I saved up enough because I started to work on the side. I started to tutor and and babysitting things on the side because I knew I wanted to purchase a home. And so yep. after two and almost three years of saving, I had like 20 or so thousand dollars saved and I put a down payment on a condo. Okay. And then my sister paid me rent. Okay. Because that's what we do. You don't give a little discount. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? But, but do you see like the key is as soon as you start making money before it even hits, figure out your financial plan and create that budget ahead of time. And then live well below your means. And do not forget, especially as an educator, you likely have access to a 403B or 401K. I was just about to ask that. Child, don't wait. I know too many educators who 30 years later are like, wait, I don't automatically. You might have a a, um, a pension, which is rare these days. You might, but the likelihood Mm -hmm. is you don't. You have to actively put money into like whatever that retirement account is that's being offered through your school. And it's yep. important that you don't just put the money in. You want to make sure that it's being invested because yes. people will put the money into the account and not realize that they will just put it into a savings account for you unless you actively say it needs to be invested. And you might be like, Girl, I don't know nothing about investing. You don't need to know. This is what you're right. going to do. You're going to put your money in. Like you're going to say, okay, take your $100, whatever, every pay period, it's going to go into your account, like at your 403B or 401K or whatever your school is offering or your wherever you're working is offering. And then you're going to look for something called a target date fund. A target mm. date fund is an easy way to invest without having to know how to do anything. A target date fund yeah. is just this. It says, when, what year do you think you're going to retire? So if you're 25, you might set it for 35 years from now when I'm 65, whatever, whatever time that is. And you're going to find a target date fund that's as close to that um, year. So it'd be like TDF 2050. TDF, yeah. you know, so you'll find a target date fund close to the year of retirement that you're thinking. Because it's usually, target date funds are usually every five years they'll give you, right? And then okay. you're going to put your money into that target date fund. So like I said, you want to make sure that you're not just saying, hey, take the $100 out, put it into the TDF 2050 target date fund. And what makes it so special is that the target date fund is going to rebalance itself every Mm. year based upon how close you are to retirement. Because Mm. the closer you are to retirement, the less less risky your investment should be. If you're 20, 90% of your your investments might be stocks. If you're 60, 90% might be in bonds or cash. You see what I mean? But you don't have to worry about all that because the target date fund will rebalance on your behalf. And so, like, if you do mm. that, you are better than 80, well, not better, but financially more secure than more than, like, 80% of people. Like, so get your budget on before you get your mm. money and make sure from day one that you are putting money in your retirement account and use a target date fund so you don't have to worry about it. If you have questions, you know, for BF1, I, I always forget my legal disclaimer, child. So I'm not your mama. I'm not your doctor. I'm not your attorney, child. I'm just one of your favorite financial internet cousins. So you're going to take what I say with a grain of salt. The smallest possible. And you're going to see your grandmother, not me. Okay. So, you know, you want to re- lean into the people that you pay for professional advice. Um, certainly you can share what I've said, but you want to choose for yourself and lean into the people that you pay for professional advice from. We're in the stew with Lacey Robinson. Lacey is the new author yes. of the book, Justice Seekers, Pursuing Equity in the Details of Teaching and Learning. Lacey, pop quiz about your book. Okay. Okay. So, if I am, what is, what's the difference that like maybe a seasoned teacher versus a brand new teacher, like what, what are those two, two educators going to get from your book? If I'm seasoned and like, you know, I've been at it 10, 15 years, child, I'm tired versus like, I'm so excited, you know, I'm brand new. What, what are those two educators going to get? So a seasoned teacher is going to get confirmation or affirmed, I okay. would say. Uh, because I would think uh, what I hear in the edusphere is that a lot of the things I experience, other mm-hmm. educators experience, um, they're going to get an opportunity to stop and ask themselves some self-reflection about their own teaching and what they have stood on. Mm-hmm. Uh, or even that little instinct that happens as a teacher when you're like, mm, something's not quite right. Even they're asking me to do this. I think mm-hmm. my student, students need this. Um, they're certainly going to get the GLEAM framework, great level, engaging, affirming, meaningful, which we ask all educators to think about 
as they are constructing, deconstructing, reconstructing their lessons. As a new teacher, they're going to get, um, I would say, some of my uh, experiences that I had as a new teacher, some of my experiences I had as a student. They're going to get some of the formidable research that we have stood on at Unbound Ed around pursuing the justice in the details of teaching and learning. And what I really hope that all teachers get from this book is that we are a collective community, honey. Mm. And when we put our minds together, we can do anything. Mm, I love that. Yes. I say, I say, I say. All right. So you say you got a question for little old me, girl. I, what you want to ask? I do. I do. So here's my second part of my question, right? So okay. I started with the new teacher, right? Mm -hmm. So I was talking to a mentee of mine the other day. She's really excited. Um, she is about to get her administrative license. Mm -hmm. uh, she's working on her doctorate right now. She's almost mm -hmm. done. And she will soon be applying for AP positions. Now, these AP positions in the systems that she's going to, honey, are starting at six figures, okay? Ooh. And this is her first time really moving into that kind of pay scale. Okay. And so what advice would you give her going from she's a mom, she has two kids, she has, you know, her regular bills, but seeing in her future yeah. a salary jump. And she said to me, I just want to live below my means. And I said, that's what everybody says, babe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what advice would you advice would you give her as she's looking at that that horizon? Yes, it's cute over here. We'll just say that first and foremost. Right, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so one, I'll start off with similar advice that I give to a new teacher is that for everyone, whenever money's coming in, you won the lottery, you about to get a raise. Mm. Before the money hits, there is what I call before money Tiffany and after money Tiffany, right? Okay. Because after money Tiffany is like, who, who said that? What? Budget? <laughs> No, she done lost her mind. Let me be, let me win $20 million in the lottery. You know, if you don't have a plan in place, the money will do what it want to do. I want okay. you to think about money like a two-year-old, right? You yeah. know, you're like, ooh, you know, tomorrow, this what The two-year-old is like, girl, I don't know what she's talking about. We're going to do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what your money, it's plotting like, mm. unless you have a plan in place, to like mm. get your two year old to realize, okay, we wake up, we brush our teeth, we do. That's why we have all these daggone songs in preschool because you got to get yes. the kids on board, like clean up, clean, you know, like. <laughs> so you have to make the plan ahead of time. So same okay. thing, you know, like um um, um mentee who's gonna be making six figures. One, let's see how much that really shakes out to be. You know, fine. Okay. Like I said, I, I don't know if it's Smarty Pig, but there is. I, I will have to find the link and give it to Imani or um our producer, the link for a site where you can just, you can just Google too, like, um, how much, um, is a hundred thousand dollars in my state? Like breaking down, like what my paycheck, Oh, you know what it's called? Paycheck city. That's what it's called. Paycheck oh, paycheck city. city. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will okay. go and you put in your 200, whatever it is, put in your state because it's actually going to withdraw the state taxes and you will see, this is what your paycheck will actually be with every, or, and then you put in how often you get paid every two weeks, bi-weekly, whatever. Um, so you want to know what that is and then look at your current bills now and then ask yourself off the top, how much of this am I going to make into a, like what I call a savings bill, you mm. know? So let's just say I'm just making up a number. You're going to be making an extra thousand dollars a month, right? Okay. So you might say to yourself, I would really love, I'm already saving 200 bucks a month. I would really love to get myself, you know, up to like maybe add another 500 onto it. That's a new bill. So that mm -hmm. way, when it comes in, I would want to know what is my first paycheck coming? Cause I'm automating having that 500 join that 200 into that yeah. savings account. Even yeah. better. You can literally do a split it before you get it. You can go down to HR and say, before you give me my money, here's how I want you to split my money Four mm. bank accounts, checking account. Number one for my, um, this is a, like a spending account. This is kind of like where your money lands that you use for your debit card. You know, you go food shopping, yeah. get your hair done, nails done the kids. Okay. Checking account number two, your bills account. Add up your bills and you should know every two weeks how much money needs to be in that bills account. And you can let them know this is how much for my paycheck to put in that bills account. Um, yep. Savings account number one, this is emergency unexpected savings. So, you know, you might tell yourself, you know, 
150, 200, 300, whatever that is, that's going to go there. And then savings account number two and the fourth account is going to be long-term savings. This is when you're saving for something big, either saving to invest, saving to purchase a home, a car, and you can literally have HR split your money before you get your money. Mm. So if you're afraid mm. that like, oh, I don't have the discipline. You ain't got to have discipline, sis. You just got to have four accounts. <laughs> and before that money gets here, you have the plan of how much it needs to go in each account. And you know what that is already because you're going to go to Paycheck City and Paycheck City is going to yeah. break down for you how much you're going to get. And if you do that, yeah. then you can literally live under your means without having to think about it because, and you give yourself a little raise in every category. So you might say to yourself, okay, I'm making an extra thousand. I'm going to absorb at 300 to, imp- and to increase my lifestyle and the mm. 700 I'm going to, so some of that, cause you'll say like, okay, in my checking account that's attached to my debit card, you know, an extra 300 can land there and I could do whatever I want with it. Or maybe you're going to okay. purchase something and you're like, okay, I'm financing it temporarily. And it's going to be an extra hundred bucks a month, but you can ab- tell yourself, allow yourself to absorb some of that new income and the rest you're going to have chopped up. If you do a split it before you get it, you will not miss it. I promise you. It will just land and you will swipe your card knowing you're not you're not swiping bill money because you don't have a debit card for your bills account. You're not swiping okay. emergency savings and you're not swiping um, your long-term savings. Your two checking should be at your regular bank, wherever you bank now, and your two savings should be at an online only bank because it has a high yield um, savings accounts there where instead of getting paid 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.1%, you might get four, almost 5% yep. on the money that you have saved there. If you do that, yep. sis, you're going to be gooder than good. You're going to be great. <laughs> but yeah, like that's great. Honestly, if you do that every single that. time, you get a bump, you get a raise, you get a, it's pre-planned for the money. You will see that you will make whatever your financial goals are. You'll be closer and closer. And because you have two little kids and, you know, the last thing I will say is, at that, you know, making, you know, six figures or multiple six figures, you know, it's not a bad idea to consider infusing a fi- a certified financial planner into the mix. Mm. You know, it's not so like for me, because I'm like growing wealth, like I meet with my, actually I have my meeting with her and uh, Anjali, my financial planner next week, but you don't have to meet with them regularly. You can literally get a certified financial planner that you just like, they help you create a plan and it's a one-off. It's like $1,200 to yeah. create a plan. You could just do that. Or you can have someone that you speak to regularly. Maybe you hire them for the year annually. Um, or just kind of project based. You just say, Hey, how, you know, sometimes they're anywhere from like 150 bucks an hour to $300 an hour to just basically talk through a financial thing that you're working through. Yeah. So the key is yeah. you want to pay out of pocket, never a percentage of what you have invested because that's going to yeah. be very expensive down the line. But like, especially if you have children, a financial planner will help you create plans for them. You know, if you want them to go to school or whatever, they'll help you with estate planning, but it has to be a certified financial planner. That's the gold star, the gold standard in the financial space, a CFP, um, player hated degree. So, you know, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and, but yeah, if you do that, you'll be good. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, times may have changed, but for educators, I know in a lot of public school systems, mm-hmm. those folks are available. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people miss the opportunity mm-hmm. and, or don't recognize that they have a financial planner that's attached to their retirement yes. or yep. attached to, okay, my, I got a final question. I promise it's my final is, question. Is this your business question for you? Yeah, it's my business question for you. Okay, me. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to allow it. We're allowing it. <laughs> so this is me. And on behalf of, I want to say, um, other women of color. Mm -hmm. who have found themselves in similar positions as me. Okay. Right? So we have, um, through, uh, I say, the grace of God and our own gifts and talents, found Mm -hmm. ourselves in these positions as leaders, CEOs, and presidents. Mm -hmm. And let's be real. We have basically used our intellectual property Mm -hmm. to make our way through, right? Mm -hmm. To to be able to support, um, push up, uh, pull, pull forward the either the groups of people that we've led or the organizations or the institutions that we lead. What would be your advice to us in terms of our intellectual property and ensuring mm-hmm. that we're not just giving away our gifts and talents, mm-hmm. but that those gifts and talents are actually pulling back into our own financial security, mm-hmm. our own financial legacy? What What advice would you give? So it depends on where you work, right? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, the people are, you know, the point of these organizations is, you know, they they want 
your gifts and talents. So mm-hmm. you want to first make sure what is the policy here about mm-hmm. how I can utilize my gifts and, um, and talents in a way that does not conflict with what I'm doing here. You know, and one of the best ways to do that typically is consulting. This is what I have seen from some of my friends who are like foot in the CEO space, but also um, oftentimes they can't speak for money because of the position that they hold, which is okay, you know, but they are allowed to consult. So you obviously you have to make sure that that is allowed within your um, the space where you work. Like I had a friend who who teaches people how to um, get, um, oh, like procurement, like, um, you know, and so but she worked for the city, like, you know, like looking at people's RFPs and deciding. So it was, you know, she, but she had to ask like, Hey, I teach people how to secure procurement, but then she's on the other side looking at people who want, you know, to secure procurement with the city. So she certainly had to ask. She actually ended up subsequently switching to another job that paid really well, but allowed her to also have this business that she started. Mm, So consider consulting, consider, um, you know, um, creating an LLC in a business. Um, so not just consulting as like, Hey, I'm Tiffany consulting. No, there's so many, so many tax benefits to a business because the government knows that like the back of this economy is built on the, um, on on small businesses. And so as a result, there are so many tax benefits that are not available to the individual. So I would start the, you know, like a, uh, Lacey Robinson LLC, and, yes. you know, and so allow the people to pay me through that. And then that way I can write off like, girl, this hair don't do itself. Would I pay for this <laughs> hair? Because guess what? I'm taping something next week. And so would okay. I pay the a hundred, two hundred dollars to get my hair retightened? Best believe budget needs to pay for that. Okay. okay. There's certain clothes that I literally set aside that are just budget needs to close. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a tomboy outside of like the stage. And so I'm like, budget needs to have set aside um, money for that. Um, and even better, like I was doing rent the runway, which is even better. Because it really proves I'm literally just renting these clothes for the time being for this particular business. So you want to be able to write things off by having and securing, like having um, a business. Also, too, the beautiful part is, is is that this is what I learned from my friend who has a procurement business, is that then you can qualify for a small black woman owned business and allows you, you know, to potentially get even more contract work. And then Mm. I would also... You know, like one of that. my, one of my really great friends, Tony, she's also my attorney. Shout out to Tony Moore, the best attorney in the world, a sister. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, we love a smart sister. Um, <laughs> Tony used to remind me, I remember one time I was working with, I'll just keep it light. I was working with people who I didn't trust. Um, okay. and I was, they did something that was kind of underhanded. And I was like, Ooh, Tony, and Tony found it in one of our contracts. I said, Ooh, girl, I'm about to tell her off. And Tony said, <laughs> she said, Tiffany, everyone doesn't need to know how smart you are. And I was like, come mm, again. Come on, she man. said, everyone doesn't need to know how smart you are. There are instances where it is best for people to underestimate you so they can show their hand and you can move accordingly. Mm. And I was like, what? So I can't tell her off? She said, no. Because she was mm. like, look how she's exposing all of these things. And as a result, we're putting it in a contract. And look how you've locked in a contract that is overly fav- favorable in your- because she does not know how smart you are. So she just telling me, mm. and I was like, oh, girl, I guess, you know, but she was right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was like, call a girlfriend and fuss, fuss with a girlfriend, you know, be like, girl, do you know, this mm. you know, she's like, that's what you call them for. But no, let them expose their hand and think that you don't know. You know, meanwhile, I'm over here. It's like, she said, what now in the contract? What else did she say? So I say that to say that where you work, if you know that this is not your forever, forever, forever spot, you don't have to bring all of your brilliance here. Everyone don't need your husband. You can set aside like, and this is for me to decide and work on projects that you plan to launch when you're not there. Mm, you know, come on, you, now. you know that's what I would be doing. Now the beautiful thing is, certainly you could test out some hypotheses where you are, which is great because child, while we're here, we gonna learn. But right. it doesn't mean that I have to roll out the full idea here necessarily because I'm saving that for me and my LLC. You know, okay. so like just okay. keeping that in mind that like, you know, like, you know, I can build this, you know, this is a good tester and I'm building it and I'm, I, you know, this doesn't take away from the, the company, but you don't have, you don't, you don't owe it to anyone to give your, you know, your life's blood and every drop of brilliance. No, where, where they say that at? No, you don't have to do all that, you know? Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, so that's yep. what I would say is that like, get your LLC, consider some consulting work. Also too, you know, you've got a really great network. Um, and so, you know, asking people in your space, I'm, I'm very candid. How you make money? 
I, literally, I will ask. You know, I was just asking a friend of mine yesterday. I was like, "Well, girl, how you making money like that?" She was like, "Oh, girl, I'm doing this." Thing. I'm like, "Oh, that's funny." I was just like, "Okay, good to know." Because when you do that, because you want your friends in the space when they figure out a new way to make money to tap you on the shoulder and be like, "Child, look, I just learned how to make money in this way." Here's yes. a thing you ought to try. And like I said, again, save some of that brilliance for you. Test out your hypotheses in the space that you're in now, but save some brilliance for you if you have it in your mind that one day you're going to step out and just be you yourself. This is for anyone, you know, listening. You know, you don't owe it to anyone yes. to give all your thing. Everyone doesn't need to know how smart you are. You know, you can say some things for yourself. There, there's nothing morally wrong with that. And so, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, the beautiful thing that like my friend uh, Cabral always reminds me is that you are like, you know, the sauce sold separately. You know, like it's you. You're the like, you know, sometimes you think to yourself, oh, you know, someone's gonna be able to do the thing. No, because the sauce is sold separately. You know, like everybody yeah. can bake chicken, but is it flavor, sis? Like, what is this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You are the sauce and it is sold separately. And where you are is where it goes. You know, yeah. you never have to wonder because people can only ever do if they're copying you what you've already done. They're late. Yes. Yes. They're late. They're behind. You Yes. yes, you take that brilliance with you. And then as long as you carry that with you and you have a good network, like network, especially networking with other amazing black women is so critically important. You know, like when we chatted on the phone, I just learned so much. And I was like, oh, my, my mind just like exploded about what <laughs> the, what's possible in this space, you know? Yeah. And so like, that's important too, to have a network of people that you could just pour into and be poured into by, you know? So, yeah, I will tell you the best, the best advice you gave me just lifted my soul. You said, Lacey. <laughs> You ain't never going to be broke because the brilliance that got you where you are now is the same brilliance you got. And I said, you know what? (laughs) And that post-traumatic broke syndrome, I said, let me find out Tiffany just broke a chain, honey. I was marching around the house. I was like, the chains have been broken, honey. No, not church. (laughs) No, but it's true. You are brilliant. It's like, girl, I'm sorry. Does that brain not work? Girl, please. (laughs) Right, you, it's like you're here. Yes. People like if you threw me into the wilderness, I would come back wearing a lion skin. And it's like that's Girl. you. Like mm. you are the sauce. Like as long as you know that you carry that with you, please. Like you yeah. are the sauce. And I know that about myself. It took me a while to learn that. But I was like, Tiffany, you will yeah. never be broke. There is always a phone call I can make. There is always yeah. someone who I can help who is willing yeah. to pay for that help. Always. And so I might not make as much as I'd like, but I'm not going to be broke. You know. Yes. You know, Say when that. you make it a business of helping other people, people will pour back into you when you're in need. So you, you're, yes. you will be fine. It's just like knowing that and then navigating from that space. That's critical. You don't want to navigate from a, a space of like, I feel this deficit. You want to navigate yep. from a space of like, no, I will always be fine. Like I, the safety nets are in place. I don't actually have to play safe. I can go leap and jump. Like, yes. cause the safety nets are in Come place. Now. You know? I hope the boss chicks, I hope the boss <laughs> women the boss <laughs> chicks are listening to this because you have just dropped some knowledge and they need to understand it and we as black women we as women mm-hmm. of color have to consistently tell each other that you are brilliant yes what got you here is not just gonna keep you here it's gonna yes. stratus it's gonna push you to the next stratosphere yes. and we i love that about you you reminded me about that about myself and i love that you just said that spoke that to um all of the brilliant uh, women out there that are on that trajectory of president, CEO, leadership, um, that their brilliance is within them. They have everything that they need. Yes, to succeed. Everything. <laughs> everything and this, this is a little Blana, uh, Vanna Black uh, uh, um, um, promo. If I know you already know that I do have a number of mentees. I think right now we're up to 3,700 mentees in our Patreon. Oh my, my mentor, goodness. Tiffany Dr. I know. Uh, Patreon, it's currently 20 bucks a month. Girl, that's nothing. Um, it, yeah. It's a live. We get a, well, I'm going to have Lacey come speak because the girls would yeah. love you. Because I like to have guest speakers sometimes. So once a month, um, you get a live lesson. And sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's a guest speaker. Like the, um, we have a guest speaker coming, Dr. Ortiz, who I mentioned is the vice superintendent of the city of Newark. She's coming to talk about curriculums. Like, you know, y'all want to make it. these courses and you want to sell curriculum. She's like, here's what they ought to look like. So she's teaching that class, which I'm excited about. Um, there's also Love like it. weekly, like kind of like chats, um, business chats with the other mentees that you get to do digitally. There's a monthly networking session that is so much fun that they do. And also I like to come meet the mentees in person. So when I have a speaking engagement in the city, I make it my business to go out to dinner with about 20 to 25 mm, um, mentees. And we on, have man. a time. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, should, you know what? That's why right. you weren't in um, DC that time that I did the wealth walk. 
Right, you weren't yes, around. I was yes. So we did a we did a we did a mentee meetup and it was so good. Just like nice. it so amazing. Just 25 black brown women talking about their businesses, you know, sharing what they needed. And you would there were so mm. many educators in that space. So many. And to see them intermingle, like, girl, you work where you do what? I do that. I can help you with this. It was amazing. So <laughs> if you want to be a mentee, head on over to mymentortiffany.com. Join us over there. It's good over there or whatever. Um, but I'd be <laughs> remiss to say other educators, if you're an educator or you know an educator or you're friends with an educator, you married to an educator, you gave birth to an educator child, <laughs> go ahead on over and get you Justice Seekers, Lacey Robinson's new book, Pursuing Equity in the Details of Teaching and Learning, because children truly are our future. And without education, that is GLEAN. What does GLEAN stand for again, Lacey? GLEAN is a grade level, engaging, affirming, meaningful instruction. I love that. And so without <laughs> that... You know, like, what are we actually doing? You know, I yeah. I used to always tell my parents when I taught, like, this is the baby that's going to knock you over the head when you're 80 years old and steal your purse or the one that's going to, like, do your open heart surgery, you know, when you yeah. go into the hospital. So it really, it's you and how you treat this child that's going to depend on how you're going to meet them later on in life because you're going to meet them later on in life. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. <laughs> and so, Lacey, where can they get your book, Just the Seekers? So Justice Seek is available at any, uh, you can go to Amazon, you can go to Barnes and Nobles, tar Target. I was in Books a Million this morning. I saw it there. So you can go online. You can go to unbounded.org uh, to our website, my company's website, and it has uh, the QR code where you can order the book straight from the publisher. Um, yeah. Try and where can they follow outlets. you if they want to connect and follow you? Because she's an awesome so black can... woman, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> for real, we got to stay close. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow me on Instagram at unbounded.org or at Ms. Ms. Lacey Robinson. Same thing, Facebook, unbounded.org or Ms. Lacey Robinson. You can find me on LinkedIn. Also on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Ms. Lacey Robinson or unbounded.org. So. I just want to say thank you so much, Lacey, for coming. You are really like your book, which is yellow, just a ray of sunshine. First of all, these glasses are giving life. On if you watched on <laughs> Insta on on YouTube, like we told you to, you could see her beautiful, amazing glasses. Um, <laughs> no, but just thank you for coming. Thank you for the work that you do, because you know mm -hmm. this space is not easy, and uh, you know so many of us, like I mentioned before, topped out because it just yeah. got to be too much. But we need, you know, we need us still here. And to know that not only yes. are you here, you are in, you know, like you are on top, you know, oh. like you are leading an organization that is leading other, you know, educators. So we're just really grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Hey, 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 BA fam. We're on YouTube. Woo -hoo. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why don't you go over to that little bell icon and just tap that for us. Show the BA fam how much you love us. And that way you'll also get notifications when new videos drop. Also share the channel with a friend. We're always like, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. And thank y'all so much again for all the support.